Hi, this is Sami Zulfikar and you're watching Social Sciences. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, although the cultural evolutionism was still popular and race theory was at its height, diffusionism began to take hold among anthropologists in several parts of the world. Diffusionism used the comparative method to explain why different societies are at different levels of development. Diffusionism, which developed in the early part of the 20th century, mentions that societal changes occur when societies borrow cultural traits from one another. A European anthropologist believed that all culture began in one or more specific areas, from which it then spread throughout the world. Diffusionism is of the view that all cultures share a common origin. So we can say that all cultural knowledge regarding technology, economic ideas, religious views or art forms spread or diffuses from one society to another. The two main schools are with a diffusionist viewpoint are with the British and the German Austrian and later we have the American diffusionism as well. Now we will discuss the school of thoughts one by one. The main spokesmen uh, for the British school of diffusionism were G. Lightsmith, William J. Perry and W. H. R. Rivers. This group presented the most extreme form of diffusionism. Smith and Perry were specialists in Egyptian culture and had carried out research in Egyptology for a number of years. They stated that most aspects of higher civilization from technology to religion uh, were developed in Egypt, which was relatively advanced because of its early development of agriculture and were then diffused throughout the world as other peoples uh, came into contact with the Egyptians. Therefore, uh, primitive cultural forms were no more than uh, degenerated forms of the original Egyptian civilization. According to Smith and Perry, uh, human beings are inherently uninventive and invariably, uh, therefore, they prefer to borrow the inventions of another culture rather than develop ideas for themselves. To explain uh, the fact that some cultures no longer had cultural traits from Egypt, they resorted to uh, an ethnocentric view, mentioning that some cultures had simply become degenerate. That is, uh, in contrast to the civilized world, the less developed peoples had simply forgotten the original ideas borrowed from Egypt. Hence, uh, it can be said that these British diffusionists proved themselves to be nearly as biased as the evolutionists. This viewpoint uh, was never widely accepted and it has now been abandoned completely. On the other hand, we have German diffusionism or Kulturkreis, of which is inspired by uh, Frederick Retzel, Fritz Schaffner and Father William Smith uh, in the early 20th century. This school also held that people borrow from others because they are basically uninventive. In contrast to Smith and Perry of the British school, who assumed that all cultural traits originated in one place, that is Egypt, and filtered out to the cultures throughout the world. The German-Austrian school suggested the existence and diffusion of several different culture complexes or cultural circles which has became the originating point and gradual spread of cultural traits. They believe that similarities among cultures is due to the result of the overlapping cultural circles. Uh, further, these similar points also depicts the chances of historical relationship among different cultures. Unfortunately, like the British diffusionists at the German school provided little documentation for historical relationship it assumed. In explaining why some primitive societies did not have the characteristics of civilization, the German school, like that of the British diffusionist, argued that these people had simply degenerated. Thus, uh, diffusionist views like the Unilean evolutionary views represent ethnocentric perspectives of human societies 
outside the mainstream of western civilization at the same time in america another school of thought emerged on which is based on the theories of franz boss and his students this school of thought was led by clark wessler and alfred crover in the first few decades of the 20th century with its modest claim the american diffusionists attributed the characteristic features of a culture area of a geographical cultural center rather than asserting that cultural traits diffuse from a few selected areas they said that various traits are associated with certain geographical locations first uh, traits develop in a certain area then diffuse outwards they concluded after mapping out and classifying the tribal groups of north and south america that cultural traits tend to spread out in all directions from their center of origin and this theory led whistler to formulate his age area principle and that is if a given trait diffuses outward from a single cultural center it follows that the most widely distributed traits found to exist around such a center must be the oldest traits the larger the area covered by the trait the older the trait although most anthropologists today acknowledge the spread of traits by diffusion few try to count for most aspects of cultural development and variation in terms of diffusion for one thing the diffusionist dealt only in a very superficial way with the question of how cultural traits are transferred from one society to another the failing was a serious one because one of the things uh, we want to explain is why our culture accepts rejects or modifies a trait that one of its neighbors has anthropologists find that diffusion is not an inevitable process societies get adjoin one another without exchanging cultural traits for example generations of amish people in the united states have deliberately maintained their traditional ways despite being part of a nation in which modern technology is predominant even if we are able to demonstrate how and why a trait diffuses outward from a cultural center we would still be no closer to an explanation of how or why the trait developed within the center in the first place how for example did the original culture of egypt develop hence we can say that early diffusionist views were based on erroneous assumptions regarding human kind and innovative capacities Like the Unilevian theorists, Diffusionists mentioned racist assumptions about the inherent inferiority of different non-Western peoples. They assumed that some people were not sufficiently innovative uh, to develop their own culture. Diffusionism, like evolutionism, also failed to provide all the answers. So this is all about diffusionism. If you have any question regarding it you can comment in the section below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel.